All right, folks. Um, this is the second part of our lab on quantitative silviculture, and we're going to go over how to use a stand density management diagram. Uh, so you should see one on your screen. Uh, this is uh, was published by uh, Thomas Dean and Eric Jokola, both professors uh, at LSU and Florida, respectively. And this was designed for slash pine plantations in the lower coastal plain. Like Gingrich style stocking guides, you would need a different stand density management diagram uh, for each region and for each species as their maximum possible SDI uh, would vary based upon those factors. And so first off, you can see there are a lot of lines on here. This is intended to do a lot of different things. We're gonna use it in a more simple fashion today. And so uh, these dotted lines that you see right here that my mouse is moving along right now, those dotted lines uh, represent the standing volume in cubic feet per acre. We're not gonna use those today, so you can disregard the dotted lines. Next up, see these curving lines right here? They're solid lines that curve. They curve down from left to right. Those are our site height in feet, 10, 20, 30 feet in height we will not be using those today. So that is also gonna simplify what we're doing. All that we're using today are the two axes with quadratic mean diameter on the Y axis and trees per acre on the X axis. And then we're using the lines that are parallel to this upper right edge of the graph. And you can see that's phrased as current annual growth potential in percentage. And so 100% is max SDI. So that is essentially a relative density in the same respect that we've been calculating Relative density is SDI divided by max SDI. So we're just using the X and Y axes and we're just using lines parallel to this cutoff corner in the upper right. You can disregard everything else on here for our purposes today. So hopefully you have one of these printed out you can look at and you are going to need a ruler to use this diagram for a couple different reasons. One, because all these lines are on here at all these different angles, this thing looks like an optical illusion. And so if you wanted to try and draw a horizontal line on here, I may be able to do it pretty easily because I'm using Zoom's annotate feature. So I'm using a computer generated line. And you see that line I've just drawn? That is actually a completely horizontal line perpendicular, sorry, parallel to the, the bottom edge of my screen here. So that, that's a flat line. But as we look at it, I know when I look at it, it looks like it's curving up to the right and it looks like it's curved, not a straight line. This diagram is an optical illusion. So tip number one, always use a ruler for this. It's your only chance at being accurate with this tool. Tip number two, see how you have these tick marks on the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, or yeah, th those are our quadratic mean diameters. See how this line over here on the right has the same tick marks, okay? Label them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a one, a two, a three, a four, and you can see they correspond perfectly to the other side. You don't have to label all of them, just label enough of them that you know what you're looking at, okay? And so again, I can draw a straight line. Now you can see that my straight line is indeed a flat straight line, four to four. When you're doing this on the diagram, what you wanna do is take out your ruler, place it on the diagram and line it up between the two fours. And that's how you know you've got that straight line there, that horizontal line. If it was 4.5, you would go between the four and the five and draw the line between that. Um, so that's, that's one good tip there. Um, let me get some Zoom features out of my way here. Hide video panel, hide floating meeting controls. There we go. Okay, now I'm able to draw on the top for you. See these tick marks on the x-axis? These are the same tick marks up here, up top. Do the same thing up here uh, where you wanna annotate them where this one right here is 2000. This one right here is 50. And so what you'll notice, I'll go to the bottom. It counts from 50 to 100 by tens, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Then it counts from 100 to 1,000 by hundreds, 100, 200. This tick mark is 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. Then it skips all the way to 2,000. So another good tip here is label this one as well. And if you wanna draw a vertical line on here, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is the same thing. Put your ruler on the 1,000 here, put your ruler on the 1,000 tick mark here, and that's going to be our only way uh, to draw that true vertical line. Okay, so those are going to be some helpful tips with the diagram. 
Um, let me show you one more helpful tip here, uh, which is based on, um, let's see here, our, <clears throat> stop that share. I exited the full screen view, so it went away. Okay, there we go. Let me show you another, another tip here that's gonna help us. And let me go ahead and label a couple of these points uh, so that you can see what I'm talking about. So again, this is one, and this one is three, and then up here, this one is 10. So I'm just gonna label one, three, 10, and I'm gonna label five. Okay, so now take a look at this. These are logarithmic axes. This is true for the x-axis and this is true for the y-axis. These are logarithmic axes. So the difference from one to 10 on this diagram will be the same as the distance from 10 to 100. Uh, the, the distance is multiplied by a factor 10 in this case, they do not add. So as I look between one and 10, you can see my red arrow there. And now I'm gonna draw another arrow for you in green. Now I'm looking between three and the one you can see my green arrow is approximately half the length of my red arrow. <clears throat> and so here's how to apply that. Look over here. Say I'm halfway between 100 and 200 right here on the x-axis. See that? That is not 150. That's going to be 130 because halfway between is 3, not 5. Okay? So if I go halfway between the 1,000 and the 200, or sorry, the 1,000 and the 2,000, that is not 1,500, that's gonna be closer to 1,300, okay? Now I'm gonna pick another color for us. Uh, let's go with blue, um, and I'm gonna go here up to the five. That's about two thirds of my distance, right? So now say I'm two thirds of the way between 200 and 300 there, that is not 267, that's 250, okay? This applies on the y-axis as well. Say I'm halfway between one and two, that's gonna be 1.3, not 1.5. Say I'm two thirds of the way between one and two, that's gonna be 1.5, not 1.67, okay? And then the other thing I wanna draw your attention to here, uh, as you get closer to a 10, look at how tightly these are all clustered. That's gonna be, seven, eight, nine, right there, seven, eight, nine, and then 10 in the circle I've done. And so you're just kind of guessing when you get real close to the end there because they bunch up so tightly with one another. Okay, so that's everything that we need to know about the different axes here. Let me go ahead and erase all that. And the tips with actually using this diagram. And here we go. So this is the scenario we're gonna use. This is not written out in your lab. Um, so I'll leave it up here on the screen for you for a minute. Um, and so with this scenario, uh, hopefully, let me see if I can make it so I'm hiding my thumbnail video so that that is not in your way. Hide video panel. Okay, hopefully that, I'm not a floating head that's in your way on the screen now. We'll see how the, the recording turns out. Um, but what you're going to do with this diagram is we're going to work on three different possible scenarios and we will compare the three possible scenarios. They will all start with a stand planted at 700 trees per acre and none of them are going to exceed a relative density of 50% and I will show you what that means in a moment. Scenario C is our first scenario. You grow the stand out to a quadratic mean diameter of 10 inches. Okay, and then you clear cut it. That's it. So that's a no thin, just clear cut scenario. Scenario D, you grow the stand for a while, then you fourth row thin it when the QMD is six inches, and then you continue growing it out until a QMD of 10 where it's clear cut. So scenario D is a one thin scenario where that one thin is a row thin. We'll continue to build on that with scenario E. Scenario E, you do the same fourth row thin at a QMD of six, and then you grow it until QMD is eight, you perform a grade seed low thin that removes 50% of the trees per acre. And again, you need to know what the impact of a low thin is on the quadratic mean diameter of your stand. You should have already done that for the Gingrich style stocking guide. But if you haven't yet, go back to the lecture notes for a couple Thursdays ago, the Thursday we were originally going to do this lab, that lecture in the morning, uh, go back to that lecture, look at the slides or go back to the video of the lecture 
and I highlighted what you need to know in that video about how a grade C low thin will impact the quadratic mean diameter of your stand. That's what you need to know. So this is a two thin scenario, a row thin and a low thin, followed by a clear cut similarly at a quadratic mean diameter of 10 inches. All F asks you to do is justify which scenario you would go with based on the best information you have on this diagram. So are you going with the no thin, just clear cut it, scenario C? Are you going with the just row thin it and then clear cut it, scenario D? Or are you going with the row thin, then a second low thin, then a clear cut scenario E? So it's a no thin, one thin, and two thin scenario. Okay, so how do you go about doing all this? Okay, well, one important thing you need to know on here is what I just mentioned, we are not exceeding a 50% relative density on this particular stand. See how these lines that parallel this edge over here, this one's labeled as 100%, 90, 80, 70, 60, and then this one is labeled A. I'm gonna draw a red line right along that line so you can see it. And it is a bolded line on your printed diagrams. It's hopefully pretty easy to find. That's 50% relative density on this diagram. And again, remember what this diagram is doing. It's displaying the size density relationship for slash pine on the lower coastal plain. You can only have so many trees of a certain size per acre. To the left of this red line, that's biologically possible on this particular stand we're looking at. So it's telling us, for example, if I follow 200 all the way up, and if I was gonna do that for you, real, I would use a ruler. It's gonna tell me that maybe an 11 inch tree is about the biggest tree I can have and still have 200 of them per acre. So my average tree size would be 11 inches QMD. I could fit about 200 of those per acre. I can't fit three or 400 per acre because that puts us over here to the right side of this red line. Okay, so the other piece of advice I have for you is think about what moving a line on this diagram does. Okay, so let me draw a line from the, let me, let me go over here to the 2000 because I can see the tick mark at the top. My zoom controls aren't in the way. So if I draw a line straight up from that 2000 up to this other 2000 tick mark, okay, first off, I wouldn't need any of this portion of the line up here, but I can't put a ruler on the screen, so that's how I'm doing that. So you don't have to continue drawing your line. But think about it. This is saying that you established 2,000 trees per acre, and they grew. They're one inch QMD. Now they're two inches QMD right here. Okay, what happens when they hit 50% relative density? I'm going to switch colors so you can see this. They wouldn't continue to go straight up from this point like I drew. Rather, they would start doing this. They would follow this 50% relative density line where look what's happening on my x-axis. I'm losing trees per acre. Why am I losing them? Density dependent mortality, self thinning. As the trees grow larger due to competition, the weaker individuals are dying off. And so by the time I get up to approximately a quadratic mean diameter of four inches, you can see I'm at about a thousand trees per acre. I have cut my density in half. Now you can see I'm very casually ballparking my QMDs and my trees per acre right now as I try to teach you this, uh, but keep in mind, you do not want to do that when you're drawing this diagram out, okay? Uh, you want a ruler, you wanna draw this out, and you wanna be very precise with this. So there are only two things on this diagram that kills a tree. One I just showed you, density dependent mortality, natural mortality, and stem exclusion. Here's the other thing that will kill trees. Look at that line I just drew from right to left. So I drew a line from right to left. I just lost approximately 600 trees per acre. You don't see time anywhere on this diagram. It may have taken me 15 years to move from here on up to here, but this may have happened in two weeks or a month. That's a thin. I cut some trees down. So that is a thin. What type of thin is it? Well, now to see what type of thin it is, I have to see how QMD impacts it. Okay, so there's a flat line across the four inch QMD line. So you can see QMD increased slightly in that green line I drew. Well, remember how thinning impacts QMD. And we can write it out over here. Okay, so thinning can increase QMD. Lowercase that in for us. Okay, it can increase QMD. Well, how do you do that? you cut small trees, okay? So what type of thing cuts small trees? 
a low thin. Okay. Okay, thinning can have no change on QMD. Well, how do you do that? You cut average trees. Well, what type of thin cuts average size trees? Cuts maybe a third of the small trees, a third of the big trees, and a third of the average size trees? That's a geometric thin, which includes corridor thinning, row thinning, mechanical thinning, okay? The other option is we decrease QMD. To do that, we have to cut big trees. And there are two types of thins that do that. We have our selection thin. And we also know that is a thin of dominance. Okay. Um, that's where you cut the biggest trees on your stand to release lower co cohort. We never see that done in the South. That would be high graded. Okay. The other type which you could see done in the, in the South is your crown thin. Also goes by a high thin. And one good example of an application of this is crop tree management. And that's very similar to the Putnam or Meadows and Skojak system that we did out at the Ballpark Woodlot and that we talked about all last week in lecture and lab. So when you're drawing thinnings on here, think about how they affect your QMD and draw them appropriately on their diagram. And so here, let's go back to my green line. I'm at, I'm at the end of this thin right here. Well, what happens at the end of the thin? Is there a reason for trees to be dying right here? There is not. I'm well below my 50% relative density line where I know I'm going to get density dependent mortality. So what happens here if trees aren't dying, I'm in the same point on my X axis, which means I can either go straight down or I can go straight up. Those are my two options. Well, if I go straight down, I'm saying I'm keeping the same number of trees per acre, but they're shrinking. Okay. Uh, you are welcome to go with that option. Uh, please talk to your academic advisor and we'll help you transfer to A&M as soon as we can. Trees don't shrink. That's not how forests grow. Okay, so our only real option is to go up. We keep the same number of trees per acre. They get larger. They're not dying. In the real world, you would lose a few trees here and there due to random density, independent mortality events. Okay, lightning strikes, whatever. But in this hypothetical scenario, we only have two things killing trees. Self-thinning and us cutting trees down, thinning, silvicultural thinning. So it goes all the way up to here. And then if you don't thin it again, it just keeps going this way, okay? Now, how do you draw a clear cut on here? I mean, with a clear cut, you end up with no trees per acre, right? And no real size. So you could do this and put a line way down to here, right? Don't bother doing that, okay? So pl please don't draw lines down to zero, zero on your diagrams. Instead, you're just gonna label this diagram. We saw you have scenarios C, D, E. And so if you end up with scenario C right up here, you can put a C on your diagram. If scenario D ends up in the same place, don't label it as D. You can label that, that row thin as D somewhere along the thin. You can label the low thin as E somewhere along that low thin, okay? And so basically, this is all you're doing in this portion of the lab. So as with the Gingrich style stocking guide, um, I'll be around for questions. Feel free to email me. Uh, but this is hopefully everything you need to know, plus what's written out in the, in the lab handout uh, to get you through the, the diagram here. Um, and before I move on, let me go ahead and I am going to erase all this stuff. There we go. I'm gonna get all these lines out of your way. And I am going to flip us back to this slide. And so I'll leave this slide up here with the instructions on your three scenarios. So you'll be able to pause the video right now. These will be up here for you. Um, and you can work your way through your diagram on paper. 